Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and a new video. I know so many of you do keep reaching out to me, even privately on Instagram, saying, Rob, what is going on with the Citroen Berlingo van that you repaired? So guys, I did say after we repaired the engine, I was gonna do a little bit of snagging in it, just run around and not actually do any more to it until I was quite happy with how it drove and that the engine was 100%. It is flashing up on the dash, it's well overdue a service. And of course, quite a lot of you did spot in the last video. It had that stone chip in the windscreen there, but the worst part was actually that crack there. So I did really took a little bit of a chance. I've been driving this one with that and it hasn't got any worse to be fair, but it is time to get this one nipped in the bud and get it completely finished today. So I've just got off the phone to Liam and he's on his way. We're gonna start with fitting that new windscreen. It wasn't that expensive, but it certainly wasn't a cheap one. It's got all those modules and bits and pieces in it there for auto wipers, auto lights, etc. So let's get him round here and get him cracked straight on with that windscreen. Then we can move on and do the other items on it. Nice new windscreen fitted there, guys, by Liam. He turned up first things this morning and got that in there for me. And as usual, he looked after us on it. So a cracking price and a cracking job he made of it also. So quite a lot of you that have been following this one, you will know that we bought it as a non-runner. The water pump seized up, the cam belt spun off, and it bent all the lobes on the cam. And a couple of the rockers were a little bit tight, so we changed them as well and got it running. It runs lovely. I did say I was gonna do a couple of hundred miles in it to test run it, and it's actually turned out to be just well over 300 miles now that I've done in this van, and it hasn't skipped a beat. But last week, the service light has come on on it. So when we did the repair work on it, it was cam belt, water pump, cam, etc., etc. I've never actually done the oil, oil filter, air filters, pollen filter, etc. And I've still done a few miles in it. So the plan is to actually get it up in the air and give it a service. They don't take long. It is quite straightforward. And if you remember, guys, it hasn't actually got the under tray on it. I haven't been able to source one at the moment. After we've done that, there is one other thing. And so many of you actually reached out in the comments of the last video and told me what the problem was. And do you know what, guys? I think you're absolutely right. We're gonna get this serviced and then we'll move on to that problem. So guys, I have actually already reset the service light, but what I am going to do, Chris, can I nick you for a sec? Yes. What I am going to do is reset it in front of you guys so that if you do need to do it on your van, so it comes up with a spanner for the service and all you do is just hold down that button. Chris, if you can turn the ignition on for me. And you see it's come up there, guys, 15,000 miles. I was actually a little bit late there, Chris. So if we could, as soon as I put my finger on it, if you could turn the key for me, you ready? Yeah. Go. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now that is the service light reset. So when you turn the ignition on, it will come up service due in 15,000 miles. There we go, 15,600 miles it's due. And that's how you reset the service light. Last job to do is the pollen filter. And I believe there's two and it's right down there. Well, I know there's two guys, because two just come in the box to replace it. But 
it did look quite straightforward on the video, so I've just watched to get it out because I haven't done one before, so we get in there and get them changed. That wasn't easy, guys. Very, very, very tight up in there. And you can see that's basically the size of the gap that you get to get it out, which is the same width as that. I've got the two new ones there. One of them sits underneath the other one, so you've got to put it in, try and knock it down, or ultimately, I haven't done that yet, but pull the other one out, then you've got to try and pull the other one up. But where you're trying to pull it up at an angle like that, it's just getting stuck. You've got to get your fingers in there and really wiggle it around to get it out. But you can see again, they've never been changed. But it's just something that's missed quite often on a service, but that is going to make all the difference inside the cabin. So, right, I can't, unfortunately, guys, I can't record what I'm doing there because well, I'm working right up in that gap there. So you can just about see the hole in the top corner there. I'll continue and get them fitted back in. Finally, guys, that's probably about 30 minutes of messing around there to get those in. I've got it all back together. And if I haven't got to do that job again anytime soon, I'll be very, very grateful because they was a pain. And of course, airflow would have to be ran the correct way. Those new ones have got tabs on them, but these, if you hear that, these are quite tough. These are original, so they're quite stiff. And that I should imagine that them genuine ones are probably a lot easier to get in than those copy ones because they was quite flexible and it kept catching. It was a bit of a nightmare. I ended up getting a big socket bar in the end to actually tap the other one down and then push that one all the way home, but all done now. So nice fresh service, peace of mind. We know everything's been done to this now. Guys, so quite a lot of you, when I was out on the test run, I kept moaning about the noise coming from these tires. And Chris even said, yeah, they are quite whiny. And I actually didn't give it a second thought, but quite a lot of you said, Rob, it'll probably be the roof rack. And do you know what? After listening a bit better, guys, I think that you're all right. And regardless of having this roof rack on this van, whoever ends up having it, it's going to be ultimately whether you need a roof rack or not. I also believe that there might be one missing. There's meant to be three. So I am going to take that roof rack off and actually put it in the back, give it a run down the road and see if that makes any difference. But I really do think you guys was onto something that is making a bit of a racket. And of course, Chris used to have one of these and he said his roof rack used to make a right racket. So hopefully there's no covers missing or anything like that. But for now, let's get that one off. Too easy that roof rack surely it shouldn't have been that easy had one bolt holding each corner on but there is only obviously the bolt holes in the roof so it's the proper one for the van i'm going to take it out for a drive now and see if that has made any difference but i think you guys were right i think it was the roof rack that was making all the racket so i'm going to take it for a nice run down the dual carriageway it was so droney and uncomfortable in the end you know the noise of it so let's go and check it out see if it's made any difference but i reckon it has right guys so all of you that actually commented and it was a lot of you and said rob it will not be those tires it will definitely be that roof rack you was absolutely right i just took it down the dual carriageway 60 mile an hour and that droning noise has completely gone there's no noise whatsoever anymore which is crazy because I was convinced it was because of those tyres, those all-weather tyres. It really did sound like it was coming from them tyres, but obviously it was the roof rack the whole time. I, I do need to put four rubber bungs in. I've just put the bolts back in for a moment, just so that no water got in there, guys, because as you can see, I did just whip down and actually have a quick valet done on it. I've 
I looked at the clocks and kind of worked it out. I actually done over 600 miles in the van since it was running just before Christmas. So it was well overdue that service, that's all done. And there is not another thing to do to this van. It is completely finished now, guys. So let's get in the workshop. So guys, don't go leaving. This is not the end of the video. This is the middle of the video. Me and Chris are huddled around the fire here. It's so cold outside. So guys, I just said then, I didn't even realize till I was sitting in the car wash and I looked at the mileage that was in that video and looked at the mileage now, and I've actually, would you believe, done 600 miles in that van. That's a lot of miles. So Chris said to me just before Christmas, Rob, chuck some tax on it and snag it, use it over Christmas. It's a nice van to use. Got the three seats in the front. It's got reverse camera, etc., etc. And ultimately, snag it. So that was quite major what we did to it, mm. wasn't it? So I, I think um, Chris kind of, seen that I've got quite fond of that van and I have been using it a lot and it's going to be no surprise to you guys that actually we just sat here and had a bit of a chat about it and Chris said Rob let's just keep it last year you seem to be in well, S a lot of miles last year it was wasn't it picking up parts I seem to um need an apartment or a flat in Essex because mm. I seem to have been there twice a week every week last year and Ultimately, quite a lot of the time there, I did sit on the M25 in the little blue van, and it's got no aircon or anything like that. So it's it's no surprise, guys. We are going to keep it. It's got aircon. It's automatic. It's got the sat nav in it. Apple CarPlay, Bluetooth, everything like that that my van ultimately didn't have. So we are going to be keeping that van. I'm sorry to everybody that was interested in it, but there is some good news. You will know if you've been following the channel for a while. My father-in-law actually gave me that little blue combo van. He retired and he said, Rob, just take it, just have it. I don't want it anymore. So I took that van and only a few months previous, it had it MOT'd, serviced, etc. So we've run that van for, it's got to be over a year now, isn't it? Easy, isn't it? It's well over a year and I really have put some miles on it. Been to and fro down to Southampton. We, do you know what? It's too much to list. I've just been everywhere in it. So the good news is that little blue van is actually going to be for sale now. So we're going to flip straight over to that, get it done. There's a few little jobs that I'd like to do to it. I did buy a service kit for it quite a while ago and I haven't got around to doing that. So we get all the little jobs done on it. And then at the end, we won't do the numbers, but I'll tell you the price. And if you're interested, I'll chuck it on Instagram and hopefully one of you are going to buy it because that little combo is a cracking little, little van, van, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We have not so long ago, we've done discs, pads. Tires. I'll put two new tires on it. Yeah. We're just about to service it, so gonna be a good little van to get someone out of trouble, that one. Let's get it in and uh, have a look at it. The old beauty. Honestly, guys, I cannot fault this van. I really, really do rate it. And like I said, I've been using it for over a year. Right, I am gonna go through it and I'm gonna service it, but there is a couple of very, very minor problems with this van that it's always had. It's never bothered me. And I'm not, it's not something that I'm gonna get into actually fixing. So, you lock the van, and it, it's gonna unlock because the door's open that side. But if you watch this door lock, it doesn't, oh, I'm gonna shut that door. That door lock doesn't actually work on the central locking. So the, va the van's lock unlocked again. Basically, it doesn't work on the key, but if you put the key in the lock, and lock it, it's locked. It all works perfect, but you press unlock, the remote locking just doesn't unlock that driver's side door. So I've always had to use the key. I've got both keys for it. Um, what was the other thing? The steering wheel. The steering wheel is a bit grotty around the top, and really it does want a Corsa C steering wheel from Roundup Mark. So I'll probably try and get the steering wheel done, but. That central locking, I don't really, I don't know what part of it's not going to be correct because when you put the key in, the central locking all works. It locks every door on the van. It's just when you push the key, it doesn't. So again, I don't want to get into spending a load of money on the van. It all locks, it all unlocks, and it's going to be worth the money. But first off, I'm going to crack straight on and get the service done. I did say I've got all the bits and they are sitting there ready to go on. So let's do it.
four and a half litres in this one, as opposed to the Bilingo, it was actually three and a half. And we'll probably hear Chris banging around in the background. Guys, I know I've said this before, and a few of you obviously mentioned it in the comments, but for those of you that are doing your car, I do see it time and time again, people pouring the oil in forwards, and it goes everywhere. I tend to actually do it without a funnel, but if you always turn the can on its side, go no mess four and a half liters so nearly the whole can here you get five liters in a can well, again I appreciate quite a lot of you do already know that you can hear it landing in the sump now let's see if we can get it bang on first go did leave the drain plug out for a long, long time as well, just to get every bit of it out that I could. All right, let's see how we got on. <laughs> Another half a litre to go, but you kind of get the idea, guys. When you turn that can sideways, it makes life so much easier. Just like that, guys, I'm pretty much done with it. The old oil was pretty black, and I'm not gonna lie, I've never changed it. Also, I can see there's only about three litres in the tray. And as you would have just seen there, it holds four and a half. That is it. I've got, a, I've just taken out all of my receipts that I need to keep. I've got a bit of rubbish in the back that I need to put in the bin. Apart from that, it's going to be get it washed, get it all nicely cleaned. It's been quite a long time. And then ultimately, we'll have a look around it, make sure everything's okay, and we'll go from there. I expected there. nothing less, guys. Come up really, really nice. It has been sat here for a good few weeks as well. They didn't go mad on it, I've just had a mini valet, and this, I think, is good enough. That's what's left of the oil from the service. There is a bit of paint, you know, my father-in-law, he was a maintenance guy, so there is a bit of paint on the back bumper and a little bit in the back here, but this is a good van, this Chris, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Very straight, it is it? very... I don't think there is a thing in it, is it? No. No, very, very straight. And the same every morning as well. Every morning since I've owned it. It's been sat out here all night. I got it washed last night. On the button. Uh, I think there was, I think it was a pre-reg from the Vauxhall dealer. It's still on a number plate. Again, all these little white dots, they do come off. But ultimately that is a nice little van and it is going to get someone out of trouble mark didn't have a steering wheel for it he said rob we got no course of seas in here which is a shame it could have done with a steering wheel and a gear gator but yeah yeah quite yeah. quite a nice little van right let's go inside and do the numbers on it so a little bit of an awkward one guys you're all probably thinking rob you got given that van you've had it for a year now you're going to sell it and have the money but that's actually not the plan. I am gonna give my father-in-law every penny what I sell that van for. So basically, I've had a free van for the past year. The brake discs and pads were sponsored, so I never had to pay for those. I think all I've done is bought two tires for it, serviced it, and driven it, and that is as far as it's gone. That van, like I said, it don't skip a beat. You could go mad and tidy it up with a steering wheel, a gator, and maybe a central lock in whatever it is, the motor or the latch inside the door there, but it's perfectly usable as it is. And I am thinking, I was just sitting here saying to Chris, I don't really know what to ask for it. I was gonna ask a grand, and he said, sounds a little bit cheap. And then I said, 12, uh, 1,500, and he said, that sounds a little bit dear. But it genuinely is a nice van, so what I'm gonna do is actually ask 1,250 for it. And I'd like to think that it's, it's got to be worth 1250 If it don't sell for 1250 I will eventually bring the price down. But I'm sure that somebody is going to want to buy that little van. It's clean, tidy and ready to go. I'm really, really happy that I've got a new van, that little Citroen Berlingo. I really do like it. You fire it up and it's got all that nice stuff on it, a reverse camera, etc. I'm not going to get into it too much, guys. But that is the end of today's video. 
the end of an era with the old combo van and the start of a new one with the Bolingo. So if you did enjoy this video, please do hit that thumbs up, share on all your social networking sites. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Selvage Rebuilds. If you've got something for sale, reach out to us on there by private message and please always include your phone number. Like, subscribe and share and we'll see you very, very soon in the next one.